Hello and welcome to Hammers Chat and what a result yesterday. I am still absolutely buzzing off it. I can't lie to you. I can't lie to you. I was nervous. I was nervous going into the game. I felt like, not that Burnley had hit form, but certainly they looked a lot scarier than they did the week before. I'd felt like we were, I'd, I'd used the term crumbling on Twitter. I'd said the word crumbling. We were conceding a lot of goals of late. We weren't looking anywhere near as sharp, anywhere near as fast, anywhere near as incisive. Um, I was scared. I was scared. Even when the lineup came out and we had all of those attacking players on the pitch and people were starting to, to get a bit hyped and get a bit of momentum behind us, I was still concerned. I felt like, had we lost the balance that we've had throughout this season, was I looking at a team and thinking maybe that we would be a bit lopsided, maybe too attacking, maybe in a game where it was raining, those players might not be able to get the ball to their feet, which is what they want to do. But <laughs> were my fears unfounded? What a result. What a performance. Excellent. Absolute. E oh, beautiful. You know what I mean? Beautiful. Um, hey, if you're new around here, subscribe, like the video, all of that good stuff. Patreon.com forward slash Hammers Chat. That's the thing. It's the beginning of the month, which means it's the best time to join. The earlier you do it, the more bang for your buck because you get charged when you join. And then when? At the beginning of each month. Links in the description below. Click on it. Have a gander. You want extra videos from Gio and Gonzo? They're there. Do you want something that I do in that's extra on there? Yeah, that exists for some reason. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Do you want audio versions of the videos we do? That's also there. Patreon.com forward slash Hammers Chat. Have a click. Have a look. Have a gander. You know, we're building a little community over there and it really genuinely helps out the channel a hell of a lot. So have a little look. Link in the description below. When the lineups came out, and everyone was sort of building their hopes, they were rising. I was concerned. I felt like it was a rainy day. I didn't want to see us just lump the ball forward when we had all these attacking players on the pitch. And we didn't at all. Like, don't get me wrong. We we certainly played our fair share of long balls. It wasn't like we didn't do that at all. But that three behind Antonio, specifically Ben Rama, Lingard, Fornals, oof, oof. Mate, they they were they were doing bits out there. They were they had the ball at their feet. They were taking players on. There were passing triangles happening. There was movement off the ball. That's something we we rarely see. When I watch Champions League a lot, I always get astounded that players make movement off the ball because we don't see it that often. So I'm just not used to watching it. So when we were getting into the final third and you had Fornals and Antonio and Ben Rama and Lingard, whoever wasn't on the ball at the time, making interesting moves into pockets of space. You had Cresswell and Kufau getting forward, especially Kufau. Like when that was happening, all of a sudden I was like, oh my God, <laughs> this isn't the worst time I'm used to. And not even in a negative sense, like, because we've been so good this season, but what we've been so good at is counter-attacking football. It's not been getting the ball on the floor in and around the opponent's defense and creating opportunities and space. What we've been good at is absorbing the pressure and then pinging them on the counter, running into that space. There's nothing better than watching Jesse Lingard with the ball at his feet with the entire pitch ahead of him because he's going to create something in that space. He will punish teams. He'll find ways to get through their midfield find ways to get through their defense that's what we've been so good at and so to see us do this as well this is a completely different side to West Ham that we haven't seen this season almost at all Lanzini oh my god I was concerned that we wouldn't have the balance I was concerned that once Lanzini was confirmed to sort of be in there and in the opening stages of the watch along when I was seeing it I saw Lanzini was playing in that deeper role next to Suchek I was worried I've always liked the idea of Lanzini playing there you know creating for the creators that thing Gio says right I've liked the idea of him being there because he provides something that, you know, uh, most of our players who, who play deeper, or most players in general who play deeper don't have, you know, he can find a he can find a through ball, he can make an incisive run, he can do something a bit different with it that Thomas Suchek or Declan Rice might not be able to do, or, or Mark Noble for that matter. But it concerned me, it scared me. I was like, oh, no, are we going to lose that balance? Because we've been conceding so much and I was so nervous that I was like... I really don't, one of the best things about us has been our balance. We've had this beautiful transition from defense to attack and attack to defense. We've had the right number of players in the right positions at the right times, you know? And he was, he was brilliant. <laughs> he was brilliant. He was making tackles. He was making good runs. He was passing. His pass completion rate was sky high. It was somewhere in the 90s. I think it was like 95 or something. He was absolutely brilliant. And all of a sudden, having Rice and Noble out, which before seemed catastrophic. And I was like, well, maybe we should have played Coventry there instead of Lanzini. We'll have to see how it goes. Yo, yo, bring it. 
I'm completely calm all of a sudden. I don't think Suchek was as good as he usually is, but Lanzini, I thought, was absolutely brilliant. And that three behind Antonio. Oh, let's give Antonio credit before I talk about the three. Antonio was excellent as well. Made some brilliant runs. He was getting in good positions. I mean, he should have had more goals, which if anything is kind of a compliment because it means he, at least he was getting into the right positions. He should have had more goals. That one where he shoots it and it hits off his own foot. Yeah, all right. That was annoying to see. Don't get me wrong. And, and uh, my G, please just put the ball in the net. Make us all a bit calmer. Although it would have been a third goal, so maybe it wouldn't have been calmer. He was really good. He was really good. And his, I don't want to quote Gio again, but the thing he said on the review about the idea of if we had a striker, an out-and-out -out recognised striker, and he had scored those goals, we would all be going, that's why you need a recognised striker. Yo, the guy was doing bits. Now let's talk about the important ones, which for me was the three behind him, four nows, Lingard and Ben Rama. I thought they were brilliant. And it was something I'm not used to seeing. These incisive passes, the, the creating of space, movement off the ball, all of these things coming together, these players linking up really well. Even when we were, even when we slowed down a little bit and we'd got into their final third, we were still creating interesting pockets of space. We were consistently getting in behind their midfield and the way Burnley work, and it's a way very similar to we work, their back line is not going to try and tackle you. So their centre backs are not going to try and tackle you. If you were in and around their area, they are going to get as compact as possible and try to block your shots. Right, We had 22 shots partially for a reason. That's because that back line, they're not going to come and try and dispossess you, right? So the job of you, the job of us, the team attacking against Burnley, is to try and get in front of those players. Because if you can get in front of those players, you're not going to get dispossessed. You're going to probably get a shot away. you know. And that's what we were consistently doing. Cork, Westwood, uh, who was it? McNeil and Brownhill. They, we were getting in behind them. We were finding the space and we were finding a lot of shots and a lot of success because of it. It was really, really good to see. When we were in front of them, they were just trying to find blocks as Ben Rama and Lingard and Fornals were just lighting up shots. You know, the Antonio one that could have been a third, I think it probably, I don't know if Fornals meant to pass, but it looked like it deflected off his foot or someone else's. Like, that was because there were so many of us around. Usually, I get, I get so frustrated. If you watch the watch along, you'll know, I get, I get frustrated when... We play the ball out to Kufal or Crest one. We're going into those those areas on either side of the area. You know, next to the corner flag, if my face is the area, it's above and below. Do you know what I mean? That sort of area. When we get into there, that we just always cross the ball in. Now, don't get me wrong. That's not a bad thing necessarily, especially when we have Suchek in there. That's not necessarily a bad thing. But it frustrates me sometimes that we don't cut the ball back, pull it back a little bit, you know, find a bit of space in between. Because if you're running into that space and the defenders are backpedaling, all of a sudden there's going to be a big pocket of space around the penalty spot, around the D, where there is going to be, well, there should be one of your players ready to receive a, a pullback who can then just pass into the net, essentially. We were doing that. We were consistently finding those places, those spaces. But not only that, we were finding good crosses as well. Kufau's cross for Antonio's goal. Um, we were doing that as well. We were doing everything. We just it, we just had everything. We had a bit of everything yesterday. And that's what I'm so hyped about. I was concerned before the game. I thought we were on the downhill stretch. I thought we were beginning to see the the energy, the the joy of this season run out and that we were going to slowly slip slowly down the table. Now, I'm not going to say top four's back on because I think we've probably missed the boat on that. But certainly the conversation isn't over. And the conversation for Europa League is not only not over, but we're probably the leading light in that right now. We're going into the next game with confidence again. We're going into it thinking that we can keep teams out. And more importantly, if teams want to sit deep, we can damage them with these players. I hope, let's say no one comes back from injury. I hope this is the lineup we go with again. I think it had balance. I think it had attacking tent. I think it had defensive capabilities. I'm just excited for I'm excited. It's it's a day later and I'm still excited about the result. But how are you feeling? How are you feeling? Who's your man of the match, for example? Who do you think was a shining light? Do you think in the next game we should line up in this exact same way? Let me know in the let me know in the comments below. And hey, patreon.com in the description, have a little look. Like the video if you've enjoyed it. Subscribe if you're new around here. And until next time, come on your wines. And uh, I'll see you next time. Bye.